Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about the descending tracts of which mainly we are going to talk about corticospinal tract which is the most important among all the descending tracts. So first let's see a sample essay question because this is usually asked as an essay question. So 60 year old hypertensive male is admitted with complaints of sudden inability to use his right upper and lower limb, inability to speak and on examination he has increased tone in some of the lymph muscles, loss of superficial reflexes and deep tendon reflexes are exaggerated. So answer the following questions based on your knowledge in physiology. So now let's see the questions that were asked. What is the clinical condition? Okay. Draw the diagram of the tract involved. Why is there an increase in the tone of the muscle? Why is speech lost in the condition? And differentiate between upper and lower motor neuron lesion. Okay. So we will see each question one by one. So what is the clinical condition? So we said he's got a sudden inability to use his right upper limb and lower limb. Which means he's got a right hemiplegia. Right. Because his one half of his body is paralyzed. It's paralyzed completely. That is why we say that it is hemiplegia. Next, he's got inability to speak, which means he's got aphasia. And then he's got increased tone, which means there is hypertonia. He's got loss of superficial reflexes and exaggerated deep tendon reflexes, which means there is hyperreflexia. Okay. So from here, we can know that because there are features like hypertonia and hyperreflexia, we know it must be a UMN type of lesion. That means the lesion is somewhere above. Okay, so when you write the clinical condition, you can write it as right hemiplegia with lesion in the left internal capsule. So why are we saying the lesion is in the left internal capsule? See here both upper limb as well as lower limb is affected. So which means the many fibers are affected. So such a condition occurs when there is a lesion in the internal capsule because the fibers are very close in this internal capsule. Okay. So, the diagnosis is right hemiplegia with lesion in the left internal capsule. The next question is draw the diagram of the tract involved. So, which tract is involved here? See, suppose because the patient has paralysis, which means his motor system is affected, right? So, the fibers which are conveying the information from the cortex to the muscles is affected, which is our corticospinal tract, okay? So, you have to draw this diagram. I will quickly show how to draw this diagram in a step-by-step -step manner. First, whenever you have to draw any tract, you can draw the cut sections of the different at different levels. So you can draw a cut section of the cerebral cortex, midbrain, pons, medulla, and spinal cord. Okay. And after that, you can start drawing the tract. So since the descending tract, it starts from the cerebral cortex, right? So the fibers arises from the cerebral cortex. Now, which part of the cerebral cortex? See, 60% of the fibers start from the motor cortex whereas 40 percentage arises from the sensory cortex. Okay, so because this is a motor tract, we tend to think that the fibers arises only from motor cortex. But it is not so. It arises both from the motor as well as the sensory cortex. Okay, so what, are we, uh, what, what do we mean by motor cortex here? So by motor cortex, we mean all the three areas. It arises from the primary motor cortex, from the pre-motor cortex as well as the supplementary motor cortex. So from all these parts of the motor cortex, there are fibers which are arising in the corticospinal tract. Okay. And they form what is known as a corona radiata. Next, these fibers which arise from this corona radiata, they move, move through a small area called the internal capsule. So here in the internal capsule, all these fibers are dense together. That is why a lesion in the internal capsule produces hemiplegia. If the lesion was just in the cerebral cortex, it would produce only a monoplegia. Okay. So here in the internal capsule, all the fibers are close together and it passes through the anterior two-third of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. This is very important. See here, this is our internal capsule like this. And here, if this is the anterior limb and this is the posterior limb, these fibers pass through the anterior two-third of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. Okay. Now, after it passes through the internal capsule, it goes down to into the midbrain and it goes through this middle cerebral peduncle. Okay. And then these fibers uh, also send out some of the fibers to the cranial nerve nuclei. 
such fibers which are sent out to cranial nerve nuclei are called cortico bulbar tract it is called cortico bulbar tract okay so cortico bulbar tract is a part of this cortico spinal tract now these fibers descend down into the pons so up till the pons these fibers were dense together but in the pons they will be scattered by what is known as the pontine nuclei and here also in the pons it gives off the cortico bulbar tract to the 6th and the 7th cranial nerve okay now after the level of the pons they again come together in a compact manner and reach the medulla and it is at the medulla that they cross together that means one half will descend down like that itself but about 80% of the fibers cross to the opposite side now this crossing occurs at the level of the medulla at what is known as the pyramids okay so that is why this is known as pyramidal decussation this is very important the, the cortico spinal tract is also called pyramidal tract because of this pyramidal decussation okay so at the level of the pyramids about 80% of the fibers cross over whereas 20% go straight down okay now the fibers that cross is known as the lateral cortico spinal tract and the fibers that do not cross is known as the anterior cortico spinal tract okay so we've got the lateral cortico spinal tract which crosses at the medulla and the anterior cortico spinal tract which do not cross at the medulla and it will descend down the spinal cord now we have to know the termination how does this cortico spinal tract terminate so the fibers of the lateral uh, cortico spinal tract and anterior cortico spinal tract comes down and the lateral cortico spinal tract synapses directly with this lower motor neuron okay so this is the lower motor neuron which synapses onto the distal muscles it supplies the distal muscles whereas the anterior co ant anterior cortico spinal tract synapses onto an interneuron and this interneuron then uh, synapses onto a lower motor neuron which supplies the proximal muscle and the axial muscles so remember the lateral cortico spinal tract supplies the distal muscles so all the fine movements your discrete movements are by these uh, lateral cortico spinal tract fine discrete movements are by uh, the lateral cortico spinal tract whereas your posture your tone that is by the proximal that is by the anterior cortico spinal tract because it supplies the proximal muscles and the axial muscles okay so this is about the cortico spinal tract so now that you've understood it it will be easier for you to draw okay so remember to write these points the internal capsule the pyramidal decussation and that it crosses at two levels okay so that's about the diagram so the next question is why is there an increase in the tone of the muscle see we know that the tone is a function of the gamma motor neuron see if the gamma motor neuron discharges more there will be increased tone so who is actually influencing this tone basically in the reticular formation we've got an excited reticular formation in the pons and an inhibitory reticular formation in the medulla okay both of these excited as well as inhibit the gamma motor neuron of these muscles okay so in this the excitatory motor neuro mot uh, reticular formation of the pons is spontaneously discharged it doesn't need any help to discharge they spontaneously discharge but the inhibitory reticular formation they are under the influence of the cerebral cortex so the cerebral cortex constantly stimulate these inhibitory reticular formation so that they always can in, uh, act they can inhibit this gamma motor neuron so in the net effect there will always be a small tone which is because of these excitatory effect of the pons as well as inhibitory effect of the medulla now what happens when there is a lesion in the cortico spinal tract see this influence of the cerebral cortex will not occur so what will happen the inhibitory reticular formation will not be able to do its work it will not be able to inhibit this gamma motor neuron so there will be continuous stimulation by these excitatory reticular formation of the pons that there will be continuous gamma efferent discharge so when there is continuous gamma efferent discharge what will happen the tone will increase so that is why in pyramidal tract lesions you can see that there is increased tone as well as hyper reflexia because of this reason okay so basically you have to remember that there are two two centers one is the excitatory reticular formation in the pons and other is the inhibitory reticular formation in the medulla so the excitatory reticular formation of the pons is spontaneously discharging 
whereas the inhibitory reticular formation is under the influence of the cerebral cortex so when there is a lesion in the corticospinal tract this inhibition will not occur, this uh, stimulation of the cerebral cortex will not occur so the inhibition of the reticular formation will not occur so there will be exaggerated uh, tone and reflexes okay so now let's see how you can write this concept in an answer form so tone is influenced by mainly two centers in the brain stem one is a facilitator facilitator reticular formation in the pons which discharges spontaneously and stimulates the discharge of the gamma motor neuron and we've got a inhibitor reticular formation which does not discharge spontaneously and acts by inhibiting the gamma efferent motor neuron discharge now the cerebral cortex stimulates this inhibitor reticular formation of the medulla okay so thus when there's a lesion in the cerebral cortex the stimulation of the inhibitor reticular formation is lost so it causes an increased excitation of the gamma motor neuron causing an increase in tone so this is the reason why there is hypertonia in case of pyramidal tract lesions okay now next why is speech lost in the condition see i said that when when the lesion is in the internal capsule not only the corticospinal tracts are involved the corticobulbar fibers are also involved okay remember i said that there are fibers which are uh, which are being supplied to the cranial nerve nuclei so this corticobulbar tract will also be involved and because of that they supply the muscles involved in speech so the speech will be affected in case of pyramidal tract lesions now there's one more reason see the main pathology here is a uh, it interferes in the blood supply so the internal capsule is actually supplied by the middle cerebral artery okay and a speech center is broca's area which is also supplied by the middle cerebral artery so whenever there's a lesion in the middle cerebral artery the blood supply other or there'll be damage to the broca's area also so that is why that is another reason why the speech is lost in the condition so see this is the broca's area and this is the wernicke's area these both are involved in speech but in internal capsule lesions or in uh, lesions of middle cerebral artery broca's areas will be damaged too because they've got the same blood supply okay so two reasons why speech is lost one is the in, uh, uh, action of corticobulbar tract and one is the role of broca's area the next question is differentiate between upper and lower motor neuron lesion so before answering this question we should first know what an upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron is so lower motor neurons are those whose axons terminate on the skeletal muscle see when i said about the termination of the corticospinal tract i said that they terminate directly on to these neurons right see this is called the lower motor neuron here you can see that the their axon the neuron of this ax, axon of this neuron is directly innervating the muscle right so this is the this neuron which is shown in pink is the lower motor neuron okay and the upper motor neuron typically refers to the corticospinal tract neurons that innervate these motor neurons so the orange colored ones are the upper motor neurons see they innervate these motor neurons okay so if the axon is directly terminating on a skeletal muscle that is the lower motor neuron and if they are innervating a uh, motor neuron that is the upper motor neuron okay so that is what what uh, lower motor neurons and upper motor neurons are now we can know the differences in their lesion now we'll differentiate between the upper and lower motor neuron lesion okay so if the lesion can be at the upper motor neuron level or at the lower motor neuron level and the features will be entirely different okay so let's see each one by one what about the size of the muscle see if it is a human lesion there will not be any atrophy whereas in an element lesion there are chances of atrophy okay next tone there is hypertonia in human lesion and we know we now know the reason why there is hypertonia and uh, in element lesion there will be hypotonia okay the tone will be decreased next in, in the case of paralysis the type of paralysis in human lesion is spastic paralysis whereas in an element lesion it is, a, it is a flaccid paralysis okay next we'll see the superficial reflexes it will be absent in both human as well as element lesions now the plantar will be extensor in case of human lesion whereas it will be a flexor in case of element lesion and you know what the sign is called right babinski sign okay and uh, deep tendon reflexes will be exaggerated in human lesion and diminished in element lesion now fasciculations and fibrillations will be absent in human lesion 
whereas it will be present in an element lesion. So here you can see that in element lesion almost everything is decreased. There is hypertonia, there is a flexor plantar, there is decreased uh, deep tendon reflexes. So everything is decreased here except for these fasciculations and fibrillations. Whereas in human lesion everything is increased. There is hypertonia, there is a spasticity, there is extensor plantar, there is exaggerated deep tendon reflexes. So for upper everything is up, everything is increased. Okay, And in lower everything is decreased or low. Okay, so uh, so we've completed all the questions now. So to summarize, we've talked about the clinical condition. We've drawn the diagram of the tract, and we now know why is there an increase in the tone of the muscle and why speech is lost and the differences between upper and lower motor neuron lesion. Okay, so I hope the concept is clear. Thank you.